Hello and welcome to our lesson video over lesson two, simply titled Logic. We will be talking about what logic is and how that relates to geometry here. Uh, the video will probably run kind of long unless I'm wrong about this um, and probably will have some parts that we'll need to cover in class. So make sure you've already read through your lesson two and done the vocabulary for all those yellow highlighted words. It's going to make this go a lot more quickly and it's going to help you understand things a lot better. So right now if you have not done your vocab for lesson two, you need to stop this video, go back and do that, and then come back and watch the video. Otherwise, hopefully you've already done that and we can move on. So in the past, we uh, in just the last lesson actually, we found counterexamples for false conjectures. That was a way for us to prove that a statement was false. Well now, we're going to determine truth values of negations conjunctions and disjunctions and represent them using Venn diagrams and we will still find counterexamples for statements. Okay, so we're going to take a look at some new vocabulary um, and I'm going to briefly show you what these are but again you should have already read definitions for these and know at least a, a basic idea of what they mean and so these are the definitions that you probably looked at. In your book, you'll probably see this, this is starting on page 99, a statement is a sentence that is either, is either true or false. So any statement that can be said to be true or false is just called a statement. The truth value of a statement is either T for true or F for false. Okay, statements are often represented using letters such as P and Q. P and Q are going to represent either full statements or parts of other statements or sentences. And so it's going to help us shorten these so we don't have to do quite as much writing. But P and Q, and often R, are used to represent those. Okay, The negation of a statement has the opposite meaning. It's adding the word not. Okay, so um, It also has the opposite truth value. Okay. The negation of statement P, a rectangle is a quadrilateral, would be read as not P, or they use this tilde symbol here, and it would read a rectangle is not a quadrilateral, and that is a false truth value. Okay, and you also talked about compound statements, or where you put two or more statements together, and they're joined by words and or or. There are two types of compound statements, those are called conjunctions, and in a little bit we'll also look at what's called a disjunction. A conjunction is any time we put two statements together using the word and. Okay, conjunction uses the word and. All right, and it's true only when both parts that form it are true. So if statement P is true, rectangle is quadrilateral, and statement Q is true, a rectangle is convex, then P and Q would read a rectangle is a quadrilateral and a rectangle is convex. And since those are both true, the conjunction is true. And we use this upward um, caret or this upward pointing arrow to mean the word and. It looks like the outer sides of the letter A. All right, and so that's what a conjunction is. All right, so your first example requires us to look at some statements and make a conjunction, a compound statement with a conjunction, so that uses the word and, and then find the truth value of that. So we want the conjunction of P and Q. You might also see that written as P, then the conjunction symbol, Q. So we want to write that full statement. Well, the statement of P, one foot is 14 inches. Statement of Q, September has 30 days. We want to write that truth value, or we want to write that statement like this. One foot is 14 inches and September has 30 days. Now, in order to evaluate the truth value of this, we're going to look at both parts individually. Statement P, one foot is 14 inches. That is not true. You should recognize that one foot of length is not 14 inches. One foot of length is 12 inches. So statement P is a, I'm sorry, false statement. I wrote the wrong letter. Statement P is a false statement. Statement Q, September has 30 days. That is a true statement. Now, for a conjunction to be true, both parts have to be true. Since one of these parts is not true, this statement itself is not considered true. It is false. I know it's tempting to say, well, that's true. September has 30 days, but because the word and is in there, the overall sentence has to be said to be false because both parts are not true. 
Part B of the same example is going to be a little more complicated. We're going to do a conjunction again, but we're going to use the negation of P. The negation of P means the opposite of statement P, or we add the word not in there. And so the negation of P looks like this. One foot is not 14 inches. Now, since the statement P had a false truth value, the negation of P has a true truth value. That is true. One foot is not 14 inches. So when I write my conjunction of the negation of P and statement R, it should look like this. One foot is not 14 inches, and a plane is defined by three non-collinear points. Remember, we wanted statement R this time, which is the last statement of the three. Now, to evaluate the truth value of this conjunction, we want to go back to the individual pieces. The negation of P has a true truth value. And statement R, a plane is defined by three non-collinear points. That is true. That's our definition of a plane. It's defined by three non-collinear points. So that is true. Since both parts have true truth values, the conjunction is also true. All right, I would like for you to take a look at this next part of this example. We're using three different parts to this example. We have three new statements. And we want to write the compound statement, this is a conjunction again, of the negation of Q and the negation of R, or not Q and not R. Remember, negation makes the opposite. Think of taking the negative truth value, the opposite of it. So I want you to try and write the statement and evaluate the truth value of your answer on your own. Okay, if you need more time, pause the video. Otherwise, this is what we should have. Statement Q, a square has five sides, is false, so the negation of Q, a square does not have five sides, is true. Statement R, a turtle is a bird, that is also false. The negation of R then, a turtle is not a bird, is a true statement. So the compound statement, using the word and, reads like this. A square does not have five sides, and a turtle is not a bird. Since both individual parts of your conjunction are true, your statement is true. All right, that leads us to our next part of vocabulary, and that's the word disjunction. A disjunction is a compound statement that uses the word or. A disjunction uses the word or. In this case, Malik studies geometry is statement P. Statement Q is Malik studies chemistry. So the disjunction using the word or is the statement Malik studies geometry or Malik studies chemistry. A disjunction is true if at least one of the statements is true. So if P is true and Q is not, then our or statement is still true. If P is false but Q is true, our overall or statement is still true. And if they're both true, then our disjunction is also still true. The only way for this to be false is if both parts are false. So for example two, we want to write a disjunction and evaluate the truth value. Here's our separate statements. Statement P, segment AB is proper notation for segment AB. That would be true. Statement Q, centimeters are metric units. That is also true. In statement R, 9 is a prime number. That is false. 9 is not a prime number. 9 has factors of 1, 3, and 9, which 3 factors means it is not prime. It is composite. So our disjunction, which we will use the symbol that is the exact opposite of a conjunction. It's a V. It looks like a capital V. That means the disjunction using the word or. So... Our disjunction combines these two statements using the word or, and this is what it should look like. AB is proper notation for segment AB, or centimeters are metric units. Since at least one of these statements individually is true, in fact both are, but at least one is, then our overall disjunction is a true statement. Okay, we are going to come back to part B of example two in class. We're going to skip that for the moment. And actually, we're also going to skip part C and come back to those two in class of example two. 
And quickly, I want to give you this little uh, diagram. This is given to you in your notes. It's very important because it summarizes the um, meanings of these words negation, conjunction, and disconjunction. That should just be disjunction. We don't need that word there. Okay, disjunction. Okay. And it gives you the symbols that we use to represent those. This is a um, tilde symbol, and it's read as the word not. This symbol read, reads as the word and. This symbol reads as the word or. All right, we do have a little bit of new vocabulary, and that is the concept of a truth table. And a convenient method for organizing the truth values of statements is to use a truth table. These uh, might even be similar to what you've done as Punnett squares in science class. Uh, they're just a table that evaluates the truth values. So uh, for negation, we have an original statement. If the original statement is true, the negation is false. If the original statement is false, the negation is true. And the dis, uh, conjunction and disjunction tables are as follows. If I have two statements, P and Q, and they're both true, the conjunction is true. But if only one or none of the statements are true, then the conjunctions are all not true or false. And disjunction just works almost in the exact opposite. In order for a disjunction to be false, both statements have to be false. So in example 3a, we are going to make a truth table for the disjunction of the negation of statement p and then st or statement q. Now, we don't know the actual statements. That's not important. We don't have to know these exact statements. We're just going to make our truth table for all the possible truth values of this statement here. Now, that means we have possible combinations of true and false for statements P and Q separately. P could be true and Q could be true. P could be true, but Q could be false. P could be false, but Q is true, or they both could be false. Now, we do want to look at the negation of P, not P. This would be the opposite of everything we had in column P. So we're going to kind of ignore that for the moment, and we're just going to focus on the opposite of each one of these. The opposite of true here would be a false, and again, sorry, and again false, but true and true for these two. So whenever we look at the disjunction, meaning or, of these two columns now, we want to keep in mind that in order for a disjunction to be false, both parts have to be false. So if P is true and not P is false, I'm sorry, I want to look at not P and Q. There we go. Sorry, if Q is true but not P was false, that's okay. At least one of these is true, so that's an overall truth. Since both of these two are false, that is when this disjunction is false. And the other two have at least one truth value out of the two, and that's the result of our truth table. Regardless of whatever the statements actually are, this is our truth table to help organize the results. And here's another um, explanation of that example, and it um, kind of explains how we got at those. And again, there you have the result we just showed you, so you can copy that down again if you missed it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, example B is much more complex. We are going to come back to that one in class because it's going to take just a little bit more time than we have. Oops, about showed you the answer. Okay. The last main idea here is Venn diagrams, and this is actually something else that um, we'll probably have to talk about in class because our video is running towards the end. But um, it's another way of organizing different groups of information. So we can actually do example 4A right now. So we've got our Venn diagram that represents the different number of um, students enrolled in different dance school for tap, jazz, and ballet classes. How many students are enrolled in all three classes? Well, that would be the part where the Venn diagram overlaps all three circles, and that would be only nine students. All right, we will come back to the rest of these examples in class. Um, and just to kind of finish up, this is kind of a longer lesson, a lot of new information, but uh, we should have time.